Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. If I speak too fast, please bl blame Dr. Muhammad. He just told me prior to this that I only have 10 minutes, so he cut five minutes of my lecture. I'm not going to delete my slides, but I'll talk faster. Um, I'd like to talk, uh, share our experience in Saudi Arabia on innovations in healthcare research. I'm going to say two or three words about the, uh, the hospital I work at. Not to boast about any hospitals, we're all a health sector in Saudi Arabia, but it is one of the largest hospitals serving the whole of the Middle East. And the reason I say that is I was chosen to be the head of ophthalmology, so that tells you a lot about Saudi women um, in Saudi Arabia. I have been for the last 16 years, so I must be doing something right. The CIT, and I put the CIT logo because I've been a founding member since it started 11 uh, years ago, and uh, Your Excellency, thank you. I think the medical sector has so far been the strongest. Um, as I was redoing uh, today my, uh, my lecture just to try to gear it to a non-medical uh, uh, a non-medical uh, audience, I, uh, this came up, and I, I want to read it to you because it really implies to, our, to my lecture. It says, uh, reminder, and it came in English. This is my Saudi uh, uh, mobile, and it also comes in Arabic, but I'm going to read the English part. Reminder, free large pizza and a free 2.25 liter Pepsi from, pe from whatever. When you buy a large pizza every Sunday and Monday, please keep that in mind. So healthcare research has really a far-reaching effect on our lives. It upgrades the standards of the medical care, producing methodologies, medicine. We should prevent, we should detect, and then we should cure. Unfortunately, as a senior person in ophthalmology, by the time the diabetic retinopathy patient comes to me, he is already legally blind, which means when he comes to me and I spend all that time with him, I am not there to improve his vision. I am there to halt the progression of the disease so that he does not come totally blind. I don't have him in the beginning. And this is very important, and this is what His um, Excellency very elegantly uh, showed in his lecture this morning, the primary care are important and integral part of our health system. How do I do this? Okay. So advances in, uh, in health care has created new challenges um, on an international scale. I'm going to read something. I'm not a reader, but it's a quotation. Some estimates suggest that the world's population is set to increase to 50% by 2050. The major part of this growth will happen in emerging economies. This is very alarming. People now are living longer. The aging population is a community problem which leads to a global problem. This will actually bankrupt the economy. Families now are looking after the elders. This leads to a social consequences and ultimately economic consequences. Chronic diseases are on the rise. The aging population and the lifestyle changes have brought major diseases to the forefront. In the past, the lifespan was 10 years shorter. This causes a greater burden on, and has brought major diseases to the forefront with particular emphasis as we see on diabetes, very elegantly shown today, it's going to save me a lot of time, on heart diseases, cancer, and of course hereditary diseases, which is considered, which is very close to my heart because I am a geneticist by trait. As His Excellency very elegantly showed today, and some of the panel also mentioned it, Saudi Arabia has now entered the top five. And this is very alarming, also with obesity. How do I do this? Oh, thank you. I should, I don't know how I... It is estimated that one-fourth to one-third of the population are diabetics. The majority of our hospital beds, and this is so depressing, are occupied by patients with diabetes and its complications. There's a huge dependence of the diabetics on the renal dialysis. We're opening more facilities. Cancer now is on the rise, again, because of the aging population. Hereditary diseases is actually higher in our population in Saudi Arabia, and I'm sure most of you know why, because of the consanguinity. And for those of you that don't know what consanguinity means, it's just the intermarriage that happens in our part. In fact, in Saudi Saudi Arabia, we are considered the highest and largest uh, um, country with the consanguineous marriage. This, these patients become handicapped, they become blind, they then further burden the economy. And we honestly have to address these challenges. 
Innovative research has a far-reaching effect on our lives. It has upgraded the standards of medical care, producing the advanced methodology. Today, we are still building more hospitals. To, and the answer is not only in hospitals, but in early detection, prevention, screening, and identifying. This is more important than curing. So importantly, prevention is the key to sustainability, and we have to prevent in order to delay the onset. Major impacts can be made in these areas by curative procedures. The key word is, I think I jumped it. I'm sorry about that. The better, the personalized uh, treatment. This is very important. For those of you, when we attended the education and we attended the finance, everyone said one glove does not fit all. That also applies to medicine. Personalized medicine in which treatment would be actually tailored to an individual's genetic makeup. And I'll give you an example. We are very active in cystic fibrosis. No two pulmonologists would not say this patient does not have uh, cystic fibrosis. We take their blood and we send it abroad. It comes back negative, so something is wrong. It means our genetic makeup in Saudi Arabia is different. That's why we have to depend on our own resources, our own mutations, and our own uh, and our own um, and our own um, labs. This is very important. So, what are the what are the initiatives? It is very important that. We in Saudi Arabia take both the basic and the applied uh, research programs, providing a bench, uh, from the bench to the bedside approach. So we're in the lab, we do whatever we need to do, and we bring it to the patient. This is very important to bring across. The radiopharmaceuticals, I can tell you in Saudi Arabia, we are the leading suppliers to the region. We manufacture and distribute. Why? Because the half-life of these expires by the time it comes from outside. So we have to have our own. We are, very, we are very happy in that because it actually solidifies the kingdom's role. The intensity modulated radiation therapy, another important thing. This actually helps our capability to treat patients with different types of cancer because if we can do the right imaging, we can prevent rather than cure. Again, very, very important. The cell biology, the stem cell therapy. In fact, in Saudi Arabia, we are the largest center in the world for bone marrow transplantation. We are very, very proud of that. The human genome, I think each of you, even if you're non-medical, have heard about the human genome. It's to tailor treatment to patients, specific genetic makeup. And this is important in our region simply because of our hereditary, simply because of our intermarriages, simply because of the consanguinity. The health statistics, again, very important in the informatics. We are now digitalizing our medical records, evidence-based medicine, in the most effective way. And this has, we have established many registries. This is with collaboration of the Ministry of Health and collaboration with the CAS, the King Abdelaziz Center for Science and, uh, and Technology. The Center for Clinical Research, again, very important important, testing the bioavailability bio of new or genetic medicine specific to our population. So we face not only the diseases that the United States faces here, but we have a much higher incidence of hereditary diseases, which has become an, inc an increasing burden. Excuse me, but I will say a, a, a quotation in Arabic. Tazawaju, taba'adu, ikhtaru lunutfukum fanna al-irqa dassas. 1,400 years ago, in the prophet time, it was mentioned, get married, but marry outside your family. But again, as His Excellency elegantly mentioned in his lecture this morning, unfortunately, we are difficult. We are to change. We are resistant to change. We do not follow the Islamic. We are more culture-oriented. When I was at John Hopkins, I thought people didn't listen to me because I was non-American when I was doing my fellowship and because I was a non-Christian when I was trying to counsel. I came to Saudi Arabia. I faced the same problem. People will not listen. Patience. That's just the way it is. They keep having children and it keeps burning. So now, what do we do? Um, we have the We have what we call the circle of life. When I see that, I become a little depressed because I would love patients to come to me here, 
before they get married, where we can counsel them, tell them what to do, but unfortunately, patients come here at the molecular diagnosis. If patients would come here, and we have been diagnosing many diseases with mutations, we can actually help them, guide them, tell them from that point. If, that, if, if for some reason they do, become, um, they do get pregnant, we do have now what we call the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis in Saudi Arabia. And we are so proud of that. In fact, the religious body has approved it where we can take the healthy eggs, give it to the mother, and that has been a promising. Let's say they do get pregnant. We do have the prenatal testing again with the religious body support, and that has really helped us. If they are born, we have the newborn screening, which unfortunately, which unfortunately can be very devastating, again, in Saudi Arabia, with the Ministry of Health, with the Research Center, with the Prince Salman Center for Disability, we are now actually um, screening 1,500 uh, 1, patients per year. Our goal in the next two years is to be able to do the um, 4,000, and that will be our goal. Actually, we're going to be reaching it before the... Um, before. So it is a key challenge. We do have to shift emphasis from that point. When patients come here, um, when the patients... Uh, when the patients actually come here with the molecular diagnosis, we then have to go to the, the, the families, we have to get their parents, we have to go to the remote areas, we have to get their siblings, we have to take the blood. It is so cumbersome and so much work that we have to do, but we have no choice. My office called me yesterday and they told me they found the novel mutation for microphthalmus, which means the eye actually um, shrinks. This is a breakthrough. Again, this is happening for us in Saudi Arabia. We have actually committed to, in Saudi Arabia to what we call, and I have to really mention this because this is sort of the business part of my lecture, the Saudi Diagnostic Limited, which is a commercial arm done by two um, institutes in Saudi Arabia. It provides tests for regional medical institutions with the highest international standards. It's introduced a molecular cytogenetic testing, and it provides testing for all known hereditary diseases. So the future is now. We've done, we have now in Saudi Arabia the King Abdullah Oncology and Liver Transplant, Center. We have the proton carbon ion therapy facility, which now brings Saudi Arabia the, to the 10 most advanced radiotherapy facilities in the world for the treatment of cancer, and the Saudi biotech complex, which is going to help us a lot within the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I will skip this, uh, this slide because I've talked about it. I've talked about it, and I would just like to say, as closing, um, as closing, um, as closing remarks, that these mega projects we have done are addressing the international and national challenges with focus on, applica on application and innovation. However, even with such tremendous facilities being introduced in Saudi Arabia and around the world, investment in future healthcare must change its research emphasis from treatment to early pre-symptomatic disease diagnosis and prevention and, and prevent and prevention, delaying the onset of disease. This is where the maximum future benefits will come from. And I will tell you this will be done through the primary cares, through the Ministry of Health. It's only the Ministry of Health that can do that. No matter how big we are up there as tertiary care centers, if we don't go to these core people in these primary centers, we have defeated our purpose as physicians. Thank you very much.